So I'm sure you want to swing the golf club faster, but what do we actually have to do to swing the golf club faster? Is it a hand speed issue? Is it a club speed issue? In this video, we're going to talk about how you can swing the driver faster. So as a golfer looking for more speed, first we have to identify, are you getting everything out of the golf club currently that you should be? Meaning that you swing the golf club so fast, which should produce so much ball speed given optimal launch conditions. So first we have to identify, are you actually maximizing your current driver and should you pursue more hand speed? Because if you're actually optimizing how far you hit your driver, then the only way we're gonna be able to make it go faster is to actually swing the club faster which is when we need to talk about the body. But if we're a golfer who really isn't getting the optimal launch conditions out of our driver and or aren't hitting the middle of the face because it may be an improper swing weight, then we have to start addressing the actual club and trying to get the club to perform better for the swing that you currently make. So now we're gonna take a deeper dive into what we need to do in each case. So when we're out practicing at the driving range and or using the indoor space and have some technology available, we tend to look a lot at club speed and ball speed. And what we want to do is we want to ask ourselves, what are we measuring? Are we measuring the hand speed or are we measuring the driver head speed? And where a lot of golfers tend to really get slowed down is they tend to think about trying to create more club head speed by trying to create more hand speed. And what tends to go wrong here is that they tend to get their hands moving very fast through impact and the club head never catches up. And when that happens, they produce a lot of forward shaft lean and lower the dynamic loft. But what ends up happening is that we prevent the club shaft's kick point from acting on the golf club head. And when that happens, we tend to lose a lot of speed. So a very easy way to think about this is if you're driving in your car and you hit your brakes very quickly, the things in your back seat are quickly revisited. And the reason for that is because we've created a force, right? So what we want to do is we want to create a bend in this shaft when we swing it, which is why we get fit for these things. And based off where the kick point is in this shaft is going to determine what kind of loft I deliver to the ball. But first off, I have to learn how to actually flex this shaft and get the club head to catch up at the bottom. Because just like cracking a whip, I'm going to want it to go relatively vertical and or straight at the bottom if the club head is catching up. And when a lot of golfers are trying to produce more hand speed, what we see is that they tend to get their hands deeper and more forward, but the club head lags more and more behind, and that's slowing down the club head during the delivery process. So one of the biggest things preventing people from activating the kick point of the shaft is the fact that they never allow for the golf club to return back to its starting position. So if we think about this, when we set up to the golf ball, what we're doing if we're trying to have just a real normal kind of zero attack angle is we're trying to return the club to the same place. But when I start with the golf swing, the club head is below the hands. And at the top of the golf swing, we can see that the club head is above the hands. So the golf club has inverted. So what we have to do is we have to get this golf club to come back down and then we have to get a braking system to happen onto the golf club. And what happens is that is going to force the club head to kick, quote unquote, around the corner and going to give me a lot of additional speed coming into the golf ball. The reason that so many of us are afraid of this though is we're terrified of the flip. Everybody's been told that we don't want to flip and we know that this is very bad, but what we have to realize is that when I'm doing this in an actual swing, my body is rotating. It's not going to be static. So most people, when they try to do this, they go, well, if I get back to low point, with my shaft more vertical, I'm gonna flip it. And they show me this, but in reality, we're never gonna move like that with this club head accelerated. Our body's gonna be more rotated and our club head's gonna be able to turn the corner and I'm gonna be able to find that nice finished position. So one of the amazing phenomenon about this and why it's so helpful to have technology available to golfers now is because the sensation many people get when they try to actually get the golf club more vertical at impact is that they feel like the hands are slowing down or that they're not creating as much force at the hand level. But in reality, it's very similar to cracking that whip and we don't actually want to keep chasing the whip through. We would want to stop the whip and get the end to come around. So it's a very similar feeling and as the hands do slow down a little bit, this will allow for the club head to catch up 
which will create better contact, better launch characteristics, and hopefully a higher smash factor and more speed. So now that we've addressed getting the kick point to be more active during the swing and create some more speed for you, now we're gonna talk about some of the things that you could do to actually increase your hand speed via the body. So one of the simplest ways we can go about creating more hand speed is by actually using the ground a little bit more. We have several videos on that that you're able to go back and watch at any time, but we're just gonna give you a simple drill here to talk about how we're gonna create some more speed. So very simply put, we call this the Flamingo. It's become very popular here at Measured Golf, but what we're gonna have you do with your driver is we're actually gonna have you set up on just your left leg. So you can see that I've got my toes all the way down on my right leg, but I've got all my weight up here on my left leg. I'm gonna go ahead and set up with my driver here. And then the goal of this is just to start making some swings and staying in balance. As you can see, I'm struggling with a little bit. There we go. Okay, and then we additionally want to start adding some length to this and trying to be able to get to where we can balance our finish. So it's really, really important that we're staying quote unquote behind this lead hip and learning how to rotate versus slide. What we tend to see with a lot of golfers who tend not to use the kick point, like we said, is the hands are getting here way too early, right? And if we're standing on one leg and my hands are way too early, I'm gonna fall backwards repeatedly. And I would imagine that a lot of you at home will do the same. So real simple, we just wanna start with simple swings doing the flamingo. We're just gonna go really short to short, and then we wanna gradually add some length and be able to add some speed as well. And that's gonna teach us how to use our lead leg a little more active in the golf swing, which is gonna create a chain reaction that gets the hands to wanna to slow down, which gets the kick point to wanna to kick, creating some more speed. I hope you found this helpful. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel. And until next time, keep running. Frankie, you wanna be in the video? Okay, you can stand there.